Welcome guys and girls. Today we are going to learn about newly released AWS Strands agents. How is it similar to existing Amazon Bedrock agents? How is it different? What are the pros and cons? We are also going to see this in action with a working demo. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj. I'm a principal solutions architect. So whatever I'm going to share today is based on real world customer interactions. Let's get started. So we have to work backward from the end goal. What is the end goal of agents? Well, let's take an example. You, the customer, will ask bunch of questions to the LLM. For example, what's the time in New York? What's the weather? List the S3 buckets in my AWS accounts. Yes, you can ask all these questions in one go to this application. And that's what I want to highlight. The end goal of agent is it should be able to take all your questions, even if they are different in nature, and able to figure out the order of operations and execute them autonomously without you giving it bunch of information in between. So how will it perform this? So obviously the LLM doesn't have the current time or weather because it's always changing and it doesn't have any idea of the S3 buckets in your AWS account. So the agent needs to use some tools. So in this case, the agent will invoke a tool one to get the latitude and longitude of New York City. Then it will invoke tool two to get the time using that location information. Then it will invoke another tool to get the weather. And finally, you got the idea, it will invoke another tool to get the list of S3 buckets using your AWS credentials. So how can this be implemented with existing bedrock agents? Once we understand the bedrock agents, it will be easier to understand the evolution to the strands. So with the bedrock agents, you can implement this with LLMs hosted in bedrock. And you will implement agents using action group. And when you define an action group, for each tool, you need to define an action group function. And you implement that using Lambda function. So in this case, you need to have four different Lambda functions if you want to keep your tool separate and that's the best practice. Now remember, the agent needs to automatically figure out what tool to invoke in what order. How will it do it? Well, when you define this action group Lambda functions, you have to provide some descriptions. For example, when you define this tool one, you need to put in the description that this action group will get the latitude and longitude given a name of a city. For this tool, it will say like, hey, this Lambda function will output the time given the input of latitude and longitude. And you also have to provide the input parameters that, okay, latitude is numeric, longitude is numeric or decimal, etc. And based on that, this agent will be able to invoke these different tools in appropriate order. But the question is, who will write these Lambda functions? You, the developer. Let's take an example. Let's say tool two, where you need to get the time using latitude and longitude. You will basically invoke an external API inside that code where you will pass the location and it will return you the time. How about the S3 bucket? So for this Lambda function, you can use AWS Boto3 SDK and then you will invoke S3 Boto3.client and then it will list the buckets and it will use the AWS credentials that you provide or the IAM role that it is running with to get all that information. And note that since you are putting this in the Lambda function, there are some of the other stuff that you need to put. The Lambda function needs event handler and all that stuff. So in summation, with Bedrock agents, it works with Bedrock hosted LLMs. You cannot use LLMs hosted outside of Bedrock. For example, if you want to use Claude model from Anthropic directly, you cannot do that with Bedrock agents. With Bedrock agents, you need to code and manage multiple Lambdas. So anytime there is a code, you need to manage it, you need to test it, all that stuff. And the agent invokes the tool based on the provided description and parameters. So you need to ensure that you provide appropriate descriptions. And for that reason, the more the amount of tools you use, the longer it will take for bedrock agents. However, there are some pros. The infrastructure is fully managed by AWS, right? Because these AWS functions, AWS manage the underlying infrastructure, it will scale as needed. 
it will make sure the underlying infrastructure is patched all that good stuff and because all this is happening inside bedrock it is easy to integrate with bedrock guardrails where you can say okay if the user sends us this prompt and if this prompt has some explicit language deny all that stuff but overall this is a little bit tedious and it kind of takes a little bit longer time for you to implement this agentic workflow. This is where AWS strands come into the picture. AWS strands can package all the tools and agents and LLM interaction in one single code base. So you are thinking, how the heck this is different, Raj? There are still tools, there is still LLM, right? Here we go. With AWS strands, you can use bedrock hosted LLM or external LLMs. And I'll show this in the demo in a little bit. Okay, this is the mind blowing part. AWS Trans comes with common tools that you need. So you do not need to go and code all these tools. So this part is super powerful. You don't need to code, you don't need to give description. Strands automatically figure out what tool to call. So no description or no input output parameter needed. So, okay, so I know this part is a little bit confusing. So let's check that out with a demo. All right, so this is a sample strands agent code. And before you run this, uh, you need to install the strand agent using pip install. And I'm using an external model. So I'm using model from Anthropic. So you need to also install the uh, strand agent for the Anthropic. And then you basically import the appropriate libraries uh, so this is the model. So I'll, as you could see, I'm using my API key from Anthropic. This is a bad way to do this. I should save this in the environment file, but I'm just showing you the easiest implementation possible. And the model ID I'm using is Claude 3.7. So this is where I create the agent. So see how easy this is. So agent equal to agent, and then I pass the model information. And I can even delete this. So let's say I comment this out. Okay, let's say comment this out. There we go. So now, by default, it is going to the bedrock cloud 3.7 using the AWS credentials using from my local laptop. Okay, and the system prompt is you are a friendly AI agent. All right, so I'm invoking the agent and I'm saying explain quantum computing in simple terms. So let's run this by running Python 3 and the name of the program. All right, so for this, it doesn't really need any tools. The LLM has this information, easy peasy. And now we are going to comment this and then we are going to uncomment this one. What is the time in the New York City? Okay, so if I uncomment this, so at this point, it should not be able to answer it because LLM does not have this information, right? It doesn't have the current time. Okay, so it says, hey, I don't have real-time access to current time information. Bedrock agent, at this point, we needed to go and create a lambda to get latitude, longitude, and then have another lambda to call an API to give you the time, all that stuff. So now, what I'm going to do is, strands come with a tool named current time. So I'll simply do strand tools, import current underscore time and scroll down, I will simply put tools equals to current underscore time. And this agent will be able to use this tool out of the box. I did not need to code, I did not need to give a description or any parameter, okay? So let's try this out. Let's save this, scroll down, and then enter. All right, see it says, I'm going to use this tool one current time and then it is able to give the current time. Okay, now let's go one step further and try to get the weather as well as the list of S3 buckets. All right, so now I also imported, imported HTTP request and use AWS. This HTTP request is super powerful. It can automatically detect what API endpoint it should call without you coding anything. And use AWS uses Boto3 under the hood to do any Boto3 supported actions, such as showing the S3 tools. All right, and then I scroll down, I do tools, and then I include this HTTP request and use AWS. 
Okay, so this should have a hiccup and this is good. I wanted to show you guys and girls. And let's also use Claude 3.7 directly from Anthropic. Let's save this. Okay, and then let's run this. Okay, so we got partial success. Okay, so if I start from beginning, remember the agent's job is to autonomously do stuff. For the number one task, current time, it says tool one, I'm using current time tool. It gives me the current time. How about the weather? Now it says, I don't have a direct weather tool available. To get weather information, I would need to make a HTTP request to a weather API. But I don't have the specific API endpoint or any authentication keys needed for this purpose. Would you like me to help you find a weather API we could use or do you have a specific weather API? So all the weather API that is out there needs a specific authentication token. They don't want you to use for free. We are gonna come back to this in a second, but then again, agent autonomously should do stuff. It goes to the third task, list S3 buckets in your AWS account, okay? It says, I can list the S3 buckets in your AWS account using the tool use underscore AWS, and then it lists, lists it. I didn't need to code anything, put any description or anything. Okay, so now let's handle the weather stuff. Only free weather tool that's available is national weather, but it takes the latitude and longitude. So let's input that. Okay, so now we are going to change up this system prompt. So let me go here. So this is the prompt. The system prompt is, you are a weather assistant with HTTP capabilities. You can make HTTP request to National Weather Service API. Still, I did not have to code the API endpoint. Process and display weather forecast data, provide weather information for locations. Uh, by the way, if you want me to put this code in my GitHub repository, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to, happy to do so. Okay, when displaying responses, format weather data in a human readable way, etc. And I'm going to copy the name of this variable and then come here and system prompt. We are going to change this with this variable. Hopefully it's still friendly AI agent. Don't come for me. All right, I save this. Scroll down, let's run this. Okay, let me make this bigger. Current time, no problem with the current time tool. All right, it's working. And then it does the S3 buckets, which we know it will do, but let's inspect what it did because this part is pretty cool. So it says, I need to find out weather in New York City. Okay, it says, all right, you told me in the system prompt that National Weather Service API is a free API, which I can use, does not need authentication key. However, that API requires coordinates. So it already figured out automatically. So to do coordinate, it needs to call another API endpoint with the name of the city, which will return the coordinates, as in latitude, longitude. So see, it calls the HTTP request, some API, which gets it the latitude longitude. Then iteratively, it calls HTTP request again for the national weather API, and then it gets the weather given that latitude longitude, and then it predicts perfectly. Okay, so today is June 1, 67 degrees, little cold for summertime, hopefully it warms up soon. All right, it also gives tomorrow's weather, extended forecast, etc. This part it already did. All right, if you had to do this with bedrock agents, you have to spend hours, right, to code all this Lambda function, you have to find out the API endpoints, etc. With strands, we just use natural language. And especially this AWS is pretty powerful. It automatically selects the one, and I'm just showing one example, whatever Boto3 command you can use, you can use with natural English language. So if you want to write your own tool, you can do that as well. In this code, you can uh, use like a tool decorator, like at tool, and then you can write your own tool. And just for information, uh, all the tools that I am loading here, like all these tools, they're all running in my local laptop, but if you want, you can create a zip file from this whole code and upload it into AWS Lambda. And then when the Lambda runs, all this tool will run on the local Lambda environment. Same thing, you can package this into a container and then it, you can run it on ECS or EKS, all that stuff. And these are some of the notable tools that AWS trends come with out of the box. The three most powerful one that I want to call out is HTTP request. As you saw, 
using HTTP request, it can literally call any API endpoint without you actually coding it inside the code. Second one is Python, where it can create the piece of Python code to do different functions. And it's kind of doing a little bit of magic because it's trained on bunch of code on AWS. And the third useful tool is use AWS, which makes, which lets you make bunch of AWS API calls via Boto3, again, without you coding or describing. So what is the summary of AWS trends? So with AWS trends, you can use bedrock hosted LLMs or external LLMs. AWS trends comes with 20 powerful tools. You can use them without coding as we saw. It will automatically invoke appropriate tool without you providing description. You can also write your own tool if you need within the code very easily. Everything is in one single concise code base, so you do not need to code and manage multiple lambdas like bedrock agents. For that reason, AWS trends is much faster when you want to implement agents. However, as we saw, AWS trends by default you can run locally like I was doing in my laptop or you can do that on the cloud but you will be responsible for that. So you can take the code and then package it, implement it in Lambda or container, ECS, EKS, etc. But then you need to take care of that part whereas Bedrock Agent, AWS takes care of that. So what do I think at the end of the day, you know, AWS provides different tools and you must use the right tool for the right job. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.